Right, you ready? Here we go. Good morning, everyone. On today's show, it is time. The premiere of a new game. Are you ready for Alan Wake's 2's DLC, The Lake House? I hope so. It's going to be an exciting one. But on the podcast, we got a few things to talk about, including some follow-up to yesterday's discussions. I'd like to talk about new goals for the week, because if you can believe it, ladies and gentlemen, the goals continue. The support is forthcoming, and it looks like if we keep the momentum up, we may actually do another whole week of awesome support and continuing the streak. But what do we do as a reward since yesterday we kind of got rid of the whole cookie idea? I think we should talk about that. In addition, I want to start talking about how are we going to do long-form reacting? Because as you know, yesterday I announced the clip show is going to be phased out over on my DSP Reacts channel. I feel like this is an important discussion that we should have. So we're going to have some back and forth and interactivity today on the show for sure. But in addition to that, yes. We're going to talk about review tech. And the thing is, a lot of people are like, dude, you're doing this again. Here's the deal. <clears throat> 10 years of bullying, right? And when things are going on with this man now, which is completely ridiculous what's actually happening with him at this point, everyone keeps turning to me like, oh, what's your take? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? And I feel like, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about it and get it out of the way. So that way we don't have to talk about it all day. That's what the podcast is for correct? To get these topics out of the way. So then when we jump into gameplay after, we can focus on the games and I don't have to answer questions about Review Tech all day. So it's going to be an interesting show on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty, everybody. So, today is Tuesday, the 22nd of October, 2024. I'm DSP. I'm excited because today, first of all, I'm trying some new lighting again. Let me know what you think. This one's more of a, almost like a fog. And I figured, hey, like a pulsating fog would work for Alan Wake, right? <clears throat> and today, I'm excited to chill with you with the Alan Wake DLC. I hope that it's good. Um, The first one was pretty good. Night Springs, uh, several months ago. Uh... And I'm having a good time, uh, you know, now anticipating that this final DLC will hopefully answer questions. You know, the entire time that we've played Alan Wake since the beginning, over, what, 14 years ago? I think it came out in, like, 2010. The question has always been, you know, what is the entity in the lake that is controlling everything in this plot? It's never really been explained. We know it's an entity that cre uh, controls creative people in their minds. And forces them to make art that then becomes real, but the art <clears throat> is twisted and contorted in a horror story, right? So, what the, this DLC is supposed to be is that the Bureau of Control from the Game Control came to the lake and investigated and built a big facility there and kind of went deep down into the lake. And then something went horribly wrong because as we've seen in the trailer for this DLC, everyone's dead. So, I don't know if this is going to be we come back later after that. <clears throat> to investigate as, like, another team. I don't know if this is going to be, um, you know, what actually happened when all hell broke loose. No one really knows because it came out this morning at 8 a.m. I couldn't even pre-download it last night. I tried, and it wasn't even available. So I had to wait until this morning to even be able to, uh, to download this thing. <laughs> so I'm excited for this. I think this is going to be a great premiere stream. I hope that you'll stick around after the podcast and hang out with me in Alan Wake 2. Um, should be a good time. Great horror theme for the month, for sure. It's very pertinent and the right time of the year for this, for sure. <clears throat> so, that's exciting. That's what we're doing today for the first stream's gameplay. And then tonight, Street Fighter Six returns for the first time in I don't even remember how long, right? Like, Street Fighter Six, I haven't played in such a long time. Um, I think I'm going to use Dalzim tonight. I was thinking about it. I was like, man, I haven't used Dalzim in a million years. And I think what we'll do is we'll first jump into casual play and see if I can even remember how to play because it's been so long since I played Street Fighter 6. 
And if I'm feeling confident enough, then I'll probably go to ranked master, you know, matches. But I don't want to jump right into master when I haven't played this thing for like an extended period of time and then, and then it just get bodied constantly, you know? Plus, I've heard Dalsim has some balance changes that are in his favor. So I'd like to play with him a bit and try to figure out where, where those improvements are. So we got a great day of gameplay coming up after the podcast. <clears throat> I apologize today. I got some of the stupid nasal drip going on. It's annoying when it happens, and today it seems to have been hitting me. Uh, so if you hear me clearing my throat or whatever, that's what it is, and I apologize. I've actually had a good streak where it didn't affect me, and all of a sudden today, this morning, it hit me. I'm like, oh, this stinks. I hate when it just it creeps its ugly head up. Um, <clears throat> there you go. So the first thing I want to really address today, a, a formal topic, okay, is basically the fact that we are continuously hitting our goals here on my streams. I did not expect that this week we would actually get this far. I'll be honest with you. I thought that yesterday the goals were not going to be met and the streak was going to end and it was going to go back to zero. And that's okay. As I've told you guys, listen, <clears throat> you guys have been so incredibly supportive of me for the last two and a half to three months. It all started in early August, right? <clears throat> and that momentum has continued. Now it hasn't been constant. If you remember, we had a streak of 41 straight streams where I was hitting all of my goals, right? <clears throat> then it died down. It ended. It started again. It ended. And that's the thing. Like, it's kind of been restarting a bunch. This is the second longest streak we've had. 29 straight streams of crushing the goals and felting the trolls, right? And that's awesome. I'm so happy for that. Obviously, I'm grateful. But it's got to end sometime. What I would like is to, to have it top the previous streak. I'd like this to go to 42. Because at least then you could say, all right, listen. So it's not perfect. We didn't get super far ahead, but at least we at least matched what we did and beat it slightly, right? Like, that's how I feel you can judge that you're at least getting a, a little bit more success is, hey, we beat the last record, right? <clears throat> By the way, I don't know what's going on. YouTube chat is not moving at all. Hopefully it's working. You guys let me know if there's an issue, okay? Um, so, yeah, like, that's the deal. I, I want to hit 42, but I'll be honest. Right now, especially this week, there's not too much going on in the realm of hot new games or anything. The Alan Wake DLC I'm interested in, I know some of you are interested in, but I also know it's not going to be as big as when Alan Wake was a new release. DLCs historically don't do as well, right? <clears throat> I think that really, when things will pick up gameplay-wise, is this Friday, with the release of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Sonic X Shadow Generations. And then after that, We've got a few more games. We've got the Halloween Marathon coming up. That always gets a bunch of attention. In early November, we've actually got a bunch of, of great releases. So I think once we hit them, we'll hit the stride where people are going to be more excited to tune into the streams every day. For now, it's kind of a downtime week until we get to the new releases on Friday, right? So thank you to those who are tuning in and to those who are supporting and engaging with the content, okay? FYI, I am this close to getting verified status on kick. No lie, I need to stream one more day, and I need to keep an average number of viewers above a certain threshold. So currently, if you're watching me on kick, thank you for that. The more the merrier, meaning the more viewers I get on kick, it's going to help me. Okay, so if you're watching, you know, right now live, and you're like, gee, I wonder, should I wa watch one place or another? Watching me on kick right now actually helps me. So if you could watch on kick today, I would appreciate that. Like I need to, to get past like another day or two of viewership on kick to qualify for this uh, verified program. And once I qualify for it and I hit it, then we can look towards the future. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I'm going to qualify for that third tier. There's a third tier of thing that's called like um the creative incentive program or something like that. I don't think I'm going to hit that. I don't have enough viewers on kick. I think the only way that I would ever have that many viewers is if I stop streaming on YouTube, which I'm not going to do, all right? I like the co-streaming right now. <clears throat> I get the feeling that as I play bigger games and stuff, that I'm going to get more attention on both streams. Um, and I know that my life split is on YouTube. That's why as you take a look, like, no exaggeration. Right now on YouTube, we have 250 viewers and climbing. On Kick, we have like 30, okay? And I think that split will continue. There will be times when maybe we'll get more or less on each, but I do feel like it's going to have that kind of a split for a while. Um, and what I may do in the future, as I've already explained, is 
I may actually do certain streams just on Kick and certain streams just on YouTube, dependent on the content. For now, I haven't done that because I needed to stream as much as I could on Kick as it is anyway. But I'll let you know as we uh, we continue on here. So if you're watching right now on Kick, thank you. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't checked out the Kick stream yet, I actually urge you to at least give it a shot. I'm not saying you have to go over there and stay. I'm just saying, hey, give it a look today. See what you think. Some people like YouTube over Kick. Some people like Kick over YouTube. Some people don't care. Each one has its own benefits. Like, I think that Kick's benefit is the chat works a lot better, has better emotes. It feels more like the Twitch chat. The YouTube side has things such as the ability to rewind the live stream at any moment, which you can't do anywhere else. So again, each one is beneficial, but I need more viewers on Kick to qualify for this verified program. So please, if you can, watch on Kick today, okay? All right, now, here's the deal. As you can see, Goals hit 29. We need, what, six more? Seven more, right? Because you, I figure today is two streams. Tomorrow is two streams. Thursday is two streams. And then Friday's first stream. Now, you already know what's today. Tomorrow is probably going to be more of the Alan Wake DLC and WWE Champions. Thursday is a day that's completely up in the air. And the reason I say that is because I want to leave it completely open. I don't know if we're going to need more time for the Alan Wake DLC. I don't know if we're going to beat it. And if that's the case, maybe we'll go back to Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and do more of the single-player campaign. I don't know if we're going to want to do more Street Fighter. I want to leave it completely open so that way we have flexibility with what we do. Okay? Excuse me. Woo! Gassy today, too. <laughs> so, by the way, uh, Lorray Tide says, how many followers do you actually have on Kick right now? Uh, over 2,000. 2,126 followers, it looks like. Uh, and climbing. Like, every day I get some more, I get some more. We have almost 700 subs on Kick, And I've only been streaming on Kick for a little over a week. 700 subs is amazing. So thank you to anyone who has supported over there. You guys have been great. Our first tip of the day has come in. Our first piece of support of the day has come in, actually. It is a $2 tip. Oh, so here we go. Basically, this, this is the person who was impersonating Reforge Gaming the other day. And I think the reason, the reason this person did this, I don't know if they were trying to start up some drama. I don't know if they were trying to just because they're a fan of Reforge Gaming. So here's what happened two days ago. On my late stream of WWE Champions, someone did a several $2 tips that said, oh, I'm Reforge Gaming and I would like you on my show and yada yada. And I said, well, I never heard of you. If you're interested in talking with me about an appearance or whatever, just DM me on Twitter or you can email me or whatever. So I got nothing. But then all of a sudden at the end of the stream, they did a $49 tip that allowed me to hit my goal for the day. All right. So all I simply did was read this out on my stream. All I'm doing is reading the messages I'm being sent. That's it. So my detractors, of course, because they're insane, actually went to this guy Reforge Gaming's channel and started contacting him saying, hey, did you tip Dark Side Phil and all this? And the guy's like, no, I don't know who that is. All right. So obviously, whoever this is, probably a fan. Because the thing is, they're not saying anything bad about Reforge Gaming or anything. About, you know what I'm saying? It's just a, someone who's using that name, tipping. And pro probably, I don't know, maybe they'd be interested in actually seeing me appear on the show. I, I don't know anything about it. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, th this person just tipped me another two bucks and says, can you please tell your detractors to stop interrupting my streams, Reforge Gaming? So you see, this is just, basically the detractors are so dumb, right? So they're like, oh, Phil made up the tip. No, why would I have made up the tip? I want you to think about this. If I was making up a tip at the end of my stream to hit my goal, wouldn't I say, oh, it's a supporter that everyone knows? So that it's more likely. Now, oh, it's a streamer whose name I've never heard of before, right? That somehow I'm pulling out of my ass that easily could be verified to find out if it was then tip. Like, why would I make that up? The thing is, they don't. Any, everything they say is so illogical and nonsensical and stupid. Like, there's no argument there. Oh, well, Phil made up the tip. If I made up the tip, I wouldn't have pulled a random streamer's name out of my ass. I would have named it something different that's more believable, right? So, whoever this person is, thank you for the tips. However, I know you're not Reforge Gaming, so I'm obviously not going to play along <laughs> and say, oh, this is Reforge Gaming who's tipping me. You know, I, I don't even think that you were trying to cause drama. Perhaps, like I said, you were trying to spurn some interest between us or whatever. I don't know. But um, thank you for the $2 tip. I'm just going to say you're an anonymous $2 tipper. Because I don't know who you are. But you're definitely not Reforge Gaming, okay? All right. 
And by the way, I, I guarantee you this person never thought that my detractors would go crazy, you know, stalking people and do shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, how dumb, right? Okay. Anyway, so that's the first contribution of the day. Remember, you can support this stream in so many different ways. First of all, if you're on YouTube watching right now, you can like the stream. With almost 200, almost 300 viewers, let's get it up to 50 likes. And currently, we're like 38. Guys, let's get it up to 50 likes today, okay? Super chats and super stickers. Greatly appreciated. Their contributions through YouTube, they help a lot. Please consider it. Memberships. Become a member today. Get access to all my emotes. Maybe give some memberships to the fellow community, okay? Tips. Tips are universal between YouTube and Kit. You can tip by either looking at the description of this stream. No matter where you are, there's a link. You can look at the About tab of my Kick page, which has a panel for it. You can type the command, uh, the command for, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. This post-nasal drip is really bothering me today. You can type the command for tips, which is just exclamation point tip into the YouTube chat. That'll give you a direct link to do it. Any of these methods, you can send a tip. And tips are great. They help immediately. I really appreciate that. On the Kick side of stuff. You can become a sub and join the Founders Club. If you become a sub right now and you pay for it yourself, you're part of the first 100 people to subscribe to my channel legit, and you get a number one badge next to your name. If you give some memberships, or excuse me, give some subs over there, <clears throat> you also have the opportunity to earn some stuff. If you gift 25 or more overall subs on my Kick channel, you become a VIP, which means you get a specialized badge. It's a crown. That looks really neat. And you'll have that forever. Only 100 VIP crowns are available. So all of this, all right, is available if you support the channel. Thank you to those who do. I will give you a live shout out. I'll update the leaderboard appropriately if you support. Awesome. Let me go ahead. Refill here. I had to refill my drink. By the way, another gratuitous shilling. I hope you don't mind the gratuitous shilling segment of the stream. You can get some Dark Side Phil merch at darksidephil.shop, including this authentically licensed Level 1 Podcast mug, which is a dual-sided mug, which is awesome. I drink from it every day. You can get t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, uh, tote bags, all kinds of fun stuff over there. <clears throat> I hope you'll give it a look, especially during this upcoming holiday season. But be forewarned, I'm being told it takes roughly two weeks for orders to go through. It takes almost a week to kind of have them process and have the products be made and then another week to ship. That's the average uh, kind of time people are telling me. So if you're looking to get something, you know, right away, <clears throat> you got to order ahead of time to have it arrive during the holiday season. I'm sure it'll probably be even, you know, more lead time once you get during the busy holiday season, right? Okay. Um. Oh, I received another contribution. I received a $20 tip from someone saying, thanks for being awesome. And that's all it says. Well, thank you so much for your support. And thanks for, for the compliment. I appreciate that very, very much. We have our first tip animation of the day, which I'm happy for because recently we haven't had a lot. As you know, we've been getting a lot of contributions over Kick, which is great. But uh, I miss the animations. I like having these Halloween animations. So tipping would be great if you want to support the channel. And I'll play a nice animation if you do a... Five dollar or greater tip today. Okay, we have different tiers of animations to play. Thank you so much. All right, we're up to twenty two bucks in support. We're almost at fifty likes on YouTube. We don't have anything on the kick side yet. I don't know what's going on over there. Seems like uh, you guys are uh, slack slacking a little bit. I think we need to get some uh, subs over on kick. What do you think? <laughs> All right, let's get to the subject at hand. Okay, <clears throat> since we've been having so much great support this week, we got to figure out something to do on Friday if this streak continues. Now, it might not continue, and it's not the end of the world if it ends, but things have been going great, right? Support's been amazing, and I want to keep uh, the idea going that if we hit the goals, that I give you guys rewards. Now, originally, the reward that we came up with was <clears throat> head over to this cookie place called Crave and buy some cookies, and I'll dress up like the Cookie Monster, which is a Halloween costume from like three or four years ago, and do like a live taste test, okay? Now, here's the thing. People didn't like it. They outright have told me we didn't like that goal. You know, we actually liked when you were doing the fast food taste test. The DSP tries it revived and it was really neat. But people aren't liking the cookie idea. Like, all right, you know, if you don't like the cookie idea, that's fine. But I want to come up with something different today. Like, no lie, by the end of this podcast, I want a new idea. All right. Of something that we can have for the goal for Friday. I want it locked in stone so people know what we're working towards and it's not this confusion or whatever. 
What do you guys think? Okay. The one idea someone came up with was this mummy wrapped taco, mummy wrapped monster taco from Jack in the Box. And we looked it up yesterday. I'll, I'll show you guys again. I'll show it to you again. It's absolutely disgusting. It's seriously gross. Oh, it just it looks bad. All right, ready? <laughs> Why would anyone eat this? Look at this. This is the monster taco. It's their regular monster taco, which is insanely greasy fried beef. Okay. Then it has got this yucky lettuce with some kind of a hot sauce. It's already got like a melted cheese sauce on it. All right. Then it's wrapped in a second taco shell with another layer of gooey cheese and bacon. It's look at this. <clears throat> It's 580 calories. D dare I click on nutrition? Oh, forget this. We'll never even read this goddamn thing. How am I supposed to read this? Old fashioned shit here. Burgers, chicken, salad, sides. Where do you see tacos? Breakfast? I don't see tacos. Taco regular. Oh, they lied. You can't even see it. They don't have it on here. It says taco regular. I know it's microscopic, right? It says taco regular, but they don't have the new one. All they have is taco regular, taco tiny, and taco with an applesauce. What the? Ew. Nah, they don't have it unless it's unless it's like a miscellaneous. Don't no, see other dipping sauce. No, they don't have it on here. They they tell you to click on nutrition and it's not listed. Yeah, it's not there. What a bunch of dicks. But I mean, just the just the normal taco. All right. How do I zoom in here? Taco regular. All right. Let's see here what those are. Wait a minute. It says the regular taco is 170 calories. The monster taco is over 500 calories. So it's three times the calories because they slathered the thing in cheese. Dude, that's nasty. <laughs> that's that's uh that's quite bad. Um sodium 360. Oh, wait a minute. Wouldn't it be a bit like a bacon nacho taco. Oh no. Oh no, dude. <laughs> I I just don't know. Guys, I don't know about this. Like, it just looks disgusting to me. Like I said, I told you guys this what was it, yesterday, the day before. I tried the the taco from Jack in the Box when I first moved out here. Alright. It was one of the most revolting things I had ever tried from fast food. I was repulsed. After taking, like, one bite, I was like, oh. I just didn't, you know, I didn't want it. So, I never finished it. So, I don't know. If you guys, listen, here's the deal. It doesn't have to be this at all. If you guys have ideas of something you would like to see me try or do as a result of hitting the goal this week, like, like it doesn't it doesn't have to be a Halloween themed thing, which seems to be what we've been doing all all along these last two weeks. So let's do something Halloween themed, the the Adams family meal, <clears throat> the uh Well then again, I guess we didn't. We did the uh Big Mac, right? The chicken Big Mac. Do you guys know of other places where you'd like to, me to try different kinds of food? Like like there's a lot of food places around here. There's sandwich shops. There's shit. We could do we could do regular fast food again, like Taco Bell. We could you know what I mean? Just I think we should stay away from burger. I really don't want to do a burger this week. I did two weeks in a row. I had burgers. I shouldn't be eating that shit. But we could do something different, right? <clears throat> no, I'm not doing the buttery jack. Stop right now. Toronto Slayer, stop in your tracks immediately. I am not eating a fucking buttery jack. I'm 42 years old. I shouldn't be eating a buttery jack, dude. You're out of your mind. I don't want to die on stream. <laughs> okay. No, I don't want to do, see. Here's the thing. Now people are like, "Why don't you do weed on stream? Eat some edibles like R to you?" Because I don't want to. You understand that that's an embarrassment. 
Like, doing shit like that is embarrassing. If you're at work, you should not be eating edible THC gummies and drinking gu seltzers. And that's ridiculous. No, I'm going to be, I'm going to be more serious than that, all right? I'm going to be uh, a professional here. So, no, I'm not doing THC on stream. That's disgusting. Okay, I'm not doing it. Anyway, um, so I'd like some ideas. Let's see here. Some type of a unique pizza? Oh, uh, I mean, we could do that. I could order some kind of a unique... What kind of pizzas are available these days, actually? Uh... Oh, come on. I typed in Papa John's. They're doing a shakaroni pizza or a jack-o'-lantern pizza. <laughs> oh, come on. There's nothing, that doesn't look very good. Jackaroni. What's Domino's doing? Oh, God, Domino's. I've had Domino's in so long. Apparently nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing special at all at Domino's. Oh no, Pizza Hut. Chicago Tavern style pizza. New at Taco Bell. Have you guys seen this? Hold on. Right, what is this? A Chicago tavern style pizza? What is that? I don't... I just want to see it. I don't want to order. I want to see what it is. This is so dumb. Can I see the product? No, I'm not allowed to see the product unless I give them my location. Uh. I don't want... I want, I want to look at this stupid thing. My hot bot... Oh my god, look how crappy that is. It's like a tiny, crappy pizza and four boneless bites. How much you want to bet? It's like 20 bucks. Oh, it's $6.99. <laughs> like, if I knew what this was, what is Chicago Tavern-style pizza? Does anyone even know what this is? It looks like it's, um... That looks to me like it's just thin crust pizza. Right? That doesn't look very good. But maybe it is. I don't know. Just a regular square pizza, so it's not a big deal. You see what I mean? We got to figure something out. We got to figure out what would you guys like me to do. It doesn't even have to be food if you guys have an idea. But it can't be, oh, change your entire schedule of gaming to do something special. No, no, stop. Friday, we have two new releases. Call of Duty, which everyone wants to see. And Sonic X Shadow, which everyone wants to see. I can't do three gameplay streams. It's just going to be my streaming. And then we're going to try to squeeze something in in between. Which is why the food works, right? <laughs> Because people say the most, why don't you do this special event where everyone gets to participate and you have people playing with you? Shut up. Just shut up. That's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a quick reward that we do as a taste test or a little special video that I can squeeze in between my normal gameplay day. People just going nuts about stuff. That, like, they get so overzealous. Can you change your whole schedule to do it this way? No. Personal Fang Pizza. They did it again. I, they keep making me type in my address to do anything here. This is so dumb. Wow. I typed all that out and they said, oh, just type your zip. All I want to do, look at the menu. There. want to order. <clears throat> personal Fang Pizza. My Haunt Box. A personal Fang Pizza and a side. All it is is a special box. The, the product is exactly the same. Yeah. So basically you're making a personal pan pizza. With it one side, and it's a box. Screw this, I'm closing this. Closing all this. It's pissing me off looking at this. Okay. 
Now, <clears throat> let's uh let's use them shout out. Chill Bill with a ten dollar Canadian super chat. How about DSP tries pumpkin carving instead of eating food? Again, guys, we have to do something realistic. Pumpkin carving. How would I do that? I'm in my office here in front of a video setup of equipment. I'm not going to roll a pumpkin in here and start carving pumpkin in my office where I work every day and make a giant mess and have to spend an hour doing it and cleaning up. That's, that's not happening. See, there's, there's real versus fantasy. We have to do something that's a realistic goal. That's <clears throat> something that can be done that's not going to interfere with the gameplay streams, you see? <laughs> but thank you for the super chat. Really, I, I, I appreciate you trying, but you should understand the difference. Like, we have to find something that makes sense and fits the criteria, not something that you have to completely do a special stream to do it. Well, I don't have time for that. We are already got all the streams are booked with new content and everything, you know? Tavern style pizza is true Chicago pizza. Deep dish is a tourist thing. So, okay, gotcha. I know what you're saying. Okay. Cosplay is a reward. Oh, cosplay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so thank you, Chill Bill, for the super chat. You're the first super chatter of the day. That's the equivalent of about seven fifty, since it's ten dollars Canadian. So we're up to twenty nine bucks in contributions so far. And it was itches. Try getting seasonal Starbucks drinks. Well, here's the thing. I'm okay with that, but I don't think that's going to be too interesting. Drinks just are never that interesting. If you do a drink and food as like a set, that's different. Like when we did the Adams Family Meal from Burger King, it was like, oh, a burger that was unique, the mini churros and the shake, then it works. But just, oh, look, I have drinks. Okay, it tastes like this. Okay, it tastes like this. Okay, it tastes like this. Okay, we're done. Right? Like, there's not much to a drink. At least when you're eating, you can look at it. You can investigate what's in there. You can describe all the different flavors. See what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, uh, anyway, what was I going to say? Boyd, what happened to all of your badges? They're all gone. Do you have them still? Uh, if this is the real void, maybe it's not the real void. No, it's him, but all the badges aren't showing up anymore. What the hell? Is Kick having issues again today? I think Kiki's having issues again today because I'm not seeing half of your badges. You still have them? Yeah, they don't show for me. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> okay. Um, Boyd says they're still there. Yeah, I can't see them. For some odd reason, they're not showing on my screen. I could see some other people's, like Legend Lurker still has his one badge. But you don't. For some reason, they're, it's gone. And by the way, don't worry. I didn't moderate you or anything. What's up, Jay? Good morning. Firehouse Subs has a new Thanksgiving turkey sub. Really? We have a few tips to shout out, by the way. If you tipped, don't worry. I'm going to shout it out. We're just trying to brainstorm here. Oh my god, excuse me guys, I'm sorry. Now I'm turning into review tech. Yeah, they do have a new Thanksgiving turkey sub. Look at this. Oh, that looks kind of interesting. I've never had anything like that before. Alright, ready? Thanksgiving turkey sub. So it looks like it's a stuffing with some kind of dressing under, maybe it's just like mayonnaise, I don't know. Sliced premium turkey and it looks like a cranberry sauce on top, right? That could be interesting. Of course, I have to order now to see it. Which is really dumb. I don't want to order now. All right, hold on. <laughs> I hate that they, all these sites do this. Why aren't you ordering now? Because I just want to see the sub. But maybe I don't want to order now, right? Okay, it says, carved slices of tender turkey breast, savory Thanksgiving stuffing, sweet and tart cranberry sauce, and a mayo. Could be interesting. Could be good. Yeah, maybe that. All right, so that's definitely a, a nominee. The Thanksgiving turkey sub uh, at Firehouse Subs, which is brand new. They just got that. 
Okay. You know, we could do we could do other things too. Here's the thing. Like, I think that trying out these different kinds of items has worked, but I could also just do a feasting with the king instead, where I actually order like a full meal from a restaurant rather than something fast foody. It doesn't have to be fast food, you know? Oh, let's see here. I have, uh, let's see, let's do some shout outs for tips. Mr. Pup Puffy Nipples tipped me a dollar twenty five. Says, "Why not try non fast food pizza like local pizza? Because there's nothing good out here. There is no good local pizza in Washington. There's nothing that's even authentic to being close to being real pizza. It's mostly all chains out here, and the few places that claim oh they're local, they're terrible. Like like <clears throat> it's actually like Indian food, but they make pizza, and the pizza's not anything close to the pizza that you would want. It's just not so good." Jason, the artist, says, no, so no sweets? No, Jason, that artist. It's not that it's no sweets. It's that I tried the cookie idea and people didn't seem to like it. So, you know, unless you could find something better than that, right? <clears throat> uh, okay, more tips here. I got a $2 tip. So this person is saying their name is Axe of Eugene. Says, I did all those Reforged donations. Sorry, I wanted to see you collab. All right. So that's who it was. It was someone else whose name is Axe, is you, uh, Axe of Eugene, whatever that means. Um, and they're saying that they were the one who, who did the Reforged. Listen, I appreciate the support. You got to understand when you do that, it does cause drama. You know why idiot detractors are so obsessed? They're going to go talk to the people and say, did you tip? Did you tip? Not that it matters. Anyone could come on here and tip with any name, and there's no way that I would know anything. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I got a dollar forty tip, and this person has an insane giant comment. They said, "Will I turn off the the lights for Alan Wake? We could see, but I don't know how that's going to work for Alan Wake. It might be too dark, but we could see how it looks." And then they said. Are you going to get XXXXL shirts? Uh, no. Right now, what you see is what you get on DarkSideField.shop. There may be more stuff added in the future, but that is it. Uh, I did talk to them about larger sizes, but I haven't gotten any, uh, any traction on that yet. So. Okay. All right, so. Basically, right now, our, our idea is this turkey, turkey sub, turkey dinner sub from firehouse subs unless someone has another idea and again it doesn't have to be a burger place it could be you know a taco place it could be a sandwich shop it could be other things or i could just look for like a real restaurant and do that too unless anyone else has a different idea but the ideas you guys are coming up with are things that all take insane amounts of investment of time that i don't have time right now is my most valuable commodity understand Everyone wants me to do everything. Everyone wants me to play this game, to talk about this topic, to do this, to do that, and I don't have time to do it all. This Friday, there's a double new release. I can't cover the double new release and do a bunch of special extra stuff on stream. It's not going to happen. We have to find something that will be easy to fit into the schedule. A, a food segment is an easy thing to fit into the existing schedule. Do you see? Just stop with the bullshit. Oh, do a community night. Do an IRL streaming. How about you run your own stream? All right? <laughs> How about that? How about you turn on your own stream and do those things if that's what you want? I don't do those things. We tried community nights in Street Fighter 6. They didn't work. Maybe I will eventually do a community night in Call of Duty. That's a possibility. I'm not doing it on Friday on the release of the game. You're insane. Please stop. Okay. <clears throat> Falcule says, any local spots that maybe I wanted to try? Maybe I could get some food from there. See, a lot, most of the local places around here I've tried. You know, my wife and I have tried all these different things, and some of them are great, some of them are not so great. So, I don't know. I honestly don't know uh, what I would do that I haven't kind of already done. I have to really look into it, but... I'm not salty today. It's that people don't understand the difference between like, oh, we're going to do a fun, quick thing as a celebration because I got support... Versus, oh, I'm going to completely design entire days of content around the, the reward. That's not what it is. And that's what people seem to think. They're just, they're out of their minds when they, they're so demanding of these things. It's like, 
if you really want that, then you have to sacrifice something else, right? But people aren't willing to do that. Oh, I want you to cover all the new games. Plus, I want you to do a community night. Plus, I want you to do IRL streaming. Oh, plus, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? No. I, I, I already work six days a week full time. I have a life. I want to spend time with my wife and my family. I can't be on stream 24-7, right? But that's it. These people are just over-the-top demanding with a lot of the stuff they ask. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> Lovecraft Union Arcade, I don't even know if I'm playing Dragon Age 4. Dragon Age 4, most people are telling me they don't even want to see me play. Because, number one, it's a lengthy RPG, and lengthy RPGs have not worked on this channel for a long time. I think we can all agree there, right? Number two, everyone's saying this one doesn't look very good. Like, it went in a direction that's completely different from the direction of the series, and people are like, eh, you know, it just ain't that, that big of a deal. So I might not even play the new Dragon Age. I don't know. I think the, re the release time is terrible. Releasing it on Halloween is a dumb idea. What's up, Jade? How you doing today? Okay. I don't know if that really works. Like someone says, what about giveaways? Like giving away a game. I could do that. I could easily buy a game and give it away. That's not a big deal. But the point is, oh, you supported me so much this week. Now I'm going to buy a game and give it to one person. That sounds like a very good, that doesn't sound good. That's like one person benefits versus if I do something special, like, okay, I'm doing a taste test. The DSP tries it. Everyone gets benefits. They get to watch and enjoy it. Versus, oh, a giveaway of one game. Yet only one person gets something out of that. So how is that a reward? Right? <clears throat> Am I fooling on my enemies again? No, not yet. We haven't done any fooling on my enemy segments. What's up, No Sleep Revives? Sarah, sadly, the, the merch shop stuff is just not available quickly. That's the problem. Sarah said, what if you would do like a merch shop, Paul, where you would show a bunch of merch, try it on, and, and you know, I can't get any of it. Like even right now, if I reached out to the company and I was like, hey, can you send me a sweatshirt and a hoodie? I'd like to try it. They'd be like, yes. And then I'd have to wait two weeks, just like you guys. Like that's, that's how it is. And I am working, by the way, I am working with them. I already told them for the fall, like later fall, I want to get, um, I want to get some of that stuff. If you haven't noticed, look, I'm wearing long sleeve shirt today, folks. I've I've adapted my fall attire. I'm wearing pants today, actual pants instead of shorts. I have fully, uh, I have fully switched over to fall mode here on stream starting today. No more summer attire, right? Which is cool. So but that's the thing. Like, I need to. I probably will talk to my the, the, to the company this week, the, the merch shop. And say, hey, can I get a couple products? The thing is, they're saying that they want me to try to get more um, more designs. And I'm like, well, the only way I could do that is to try to dig into my old files and find some of this old art. You know, I don't have a ton of new art right now. Um, nor have I had a chance to even go out and see if there's someone I could commission to make art. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've just, I've been so busy. Uh, so I have to look into that. I think personally the designs are fine right now. Just, I think, you know, I want to show off some more uh, of the merch, like the, the heavier stuff for the fall, right? So, oh, by the way, what's up, Dark Side Pimp? How are you today? Welcome to, to, the, to the streams. How is everybody? Okay. All right, so here's the deal. Let's continue to talk about this. Let's continue to brainstorm. And let's continue to uh, figure out what we want to do on Friday. When we hit this this streak, it's going to be 36 streams on the first stream on Friday of hitting the goals. So let's figure it out. Right now, I think a sandwich perhaps is a better idea. Like this turkey sub could be good. This, the pizzas, sadly, there was nothing special with any of the pizzas. I was looking and none of them were anything special. Unless you want to see me try this Chicago tavern style pizza from Pizza Hut. But I mean, it's Pizza Hut. It's not going to be great, right? So that's some of the ideas that we have uh, right now. Okay. Let's keep talking about this. Let's try to figure this out. Fair enough? Okay. No, Dark Side Pimp, people didn't like this uh, this Crave cookie idea. I wanted to do it. And then people were like, yeah, this sucks. We don't want it. 
And I was like, oh, well, then let's think of something else. Like, I'm down for whatever. I'm down for whatever people want to do on Friday, but it can't be something intrusive to the schedule. It can't be do an entire special stream. Well, no, I can't do that. I got double new release on Friday. I can't completely change my schedule, work double hours. It's not happening, right? What we need to figure out is something that can be easily done, fit into the schedule, but it's a fun celebratory event. So I said, like, a, a, a DSP tries it, a feasting with the king. People have ideas of different things to do. That would work, okay? <clears throat> yeah, I know. Crazy Warlock says, sounds like some people are just trying to drive you crazy. I know. I know. It's that some people just, they're never satisfied, right? <clears throat> okay. All right, well, that's our first discussion. Let's keep this going this week and figure it out, okay? Um, Number two, topic of discussion, all right? I announced yesterday that I am retiring my Clips React show as of November. In fact, there's only three more episodes, three more weeks that we're doing DSP versus the internet. It's going to end at episode 90. What I want to do is I want to start doing long-form reacts again. I actually miss them. I miss sitting down and being able to watch a long-form uh, video, whether it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or upwards of hours long, who knows, right? But being able to intelligently watch and learn and respond to a topic, the clip show is good, but the clip show is kind of played out. I've done it for two years. I've seen so many varieties of clips, which I appreciate. I really liked the show. But at this point, I feel like we've kind of exhausted all of the interesting topics that we could do on that show. Um, I, I prefer to do something different and branch out and do other kinds of content. And the funny part is, as we've done the clip show, some people have submitted like 30 plus minute clips and we watch like five minutes of it. And I'm like, this is a fascinating topic that I would love to look more into. But sadly, this is a clip show and we don't have time. So now if I change the format and we do a long form react, maybe once a month, maybe once every other week or something like that, then we could get more into interesting topics, I feel, right? Um, but the question is, how do you do it? Because right now, the format of the clip show was that people would become members of DSP React. And if they were the highest tier, they, ultra members, we were guaranteed to watch their video. Or if they were the submission tier members, which was like five bucks a month, their, their video would go into a randomized playlist, right? Obviously, this isn't going to happen anymore. So do we have member interaction where people who become members of the channel now are the people who suggest the topics? And then perhaps, perhaps then I review those topics and I pick the best one, or maybe I review the topics and there's a poll to determine the best one, right? I'm curious how, the, how we can go forward with this, because here's, here's the idea, is that once we figure this out, right, then I can say, okay, on Monday, December 12th, I, I just pulled that out of the day, I don't even know if that's the real date, but it will be a long-form react on DSP Reacts or on Kick where I'm, I'm, you know, going to be watching this particular video. This is the topic. I'm going to be watching it in depth. And I'm going to be doing a long-form commentary, but it's also going to be an open discussion format where people can talk with me during it, and we can really get into the topic at hand. And that's more fun, in my opinion, than just tune in and see random clips. Because you have no idea what you're going to see, right? You, you might see something you like. You might see something you hate. And if you think it was kind of a boring week, like, man, I wasted my afternoon watching that, right? As opposed to if you know the topic that I'm going to address and you're interested in said topic, then you could show up for the topic you like. And maybe it's a topic you're not interested in. Then you don't have to show up for it, right? I think that's kind of been the problem with the ongoing clip show is that because no one knows what the topics are going to be, you can't maintain consistent viewership or interest. And that's what's happened. The interest has greatly waned with the show. When I first started the Clips React show, we were getting, no lie, like 50 plus video submissions a week. It was wild the amount of people who wanted to get their video watched. But over the course of two years, now we barely get like 20 video submissions a week. We went from, from having uh, like 10, 20 or more ultra members and like 50 or more standard members down to like five ultra members and 11 standard members. So you see what I'm saying? It doesn't, it's not justifying the amount of time I'm putting into it anymore. We've got to figure out... Uh, you know, how to make this, this long form show work a little better. I like the idea of the interaction. I don't want it to just be, oh, I pick a topic and I do a video and that's that. I want you guys to have say 
on this show of the kind of stuff that I'm checking out, all right? But I'm not exactly sure how to do it. I mean, should it, it could be members-based. The other Here's the other thing, and this is the other big factor here, okay? Um, now that I'm streaming on Kick, a lot of people are like, well, you realize now when you do React content, you shouldn't have issue. You can react to anything on Kick, and Kick won't hit you with copyright takedowns, content IDs. You'll just be able to watch unhindered. That's a good point. Like, Kick, I think, is a good asset for React content. You don't have to worry about, oh, no, your stream's going to get taken down because you were watching someone else's YouTube video, and they just happen to be part of a partner network that's claim-happy on YouTube, and they just destroy your stream, right? So that's good. But if that's the case, how could I possibly get Kick viewers involved, right? I don't know. I have a Cowboy fan says a poll would work. I think I think it should be step one nominations, similar to how we're doing the Halloween event right now, right? Step one was people nominated stuff. And then we tallied it up. And then step two, there's a poll that people can vote to narrow it down to the content you want to see. And so maybe for this very first long form react that I do, right? What it can be is we have a, a, a maybe it's, it's members perhaps on the on the React channel who nominate, or maybe it's Kick subs. I don't know how to contact Kick subs though. Like that's that's one of the the daunting challenges here. Like how would I say, hey, if you're part of Kick and you're subbed over there, right? That you could could you could figure this out. I don't know how to do that because on YouTube you have members only posts. There's like nothing like that on Kick, correct? So this is what I mean. I want to start brainstorming this. I would like to maybe do my first one in December, okay? Like a long-form React where you guys have a say to nominate initially the kind of videos you'd like to see me watch. Then we have a poll to determine what it is. And maybe let's say the poll is five and we get the top three. Maybe the first React I do is the first most voted thing. And then maybe in January I do another one and that could be the thing that came in as runner-up number two. You know what I mean? Like that would work, I think. And that would, by the way, that would give good content for DSP Reacts instead of just clips, clips, clips. It would be more coherent content that I feel people would be more willing to watch and come back to the channel if there was more coherent content on it, right? Take a look at the food stuff I just did. The, the Adam's Family Meal and now the Chicken Big Mac and the McDonald's stuff. It has good views. It's got 1,000, 2,000 more views on those videos. Then take a look at the clips videos, 200 views. Right? So if it's coherent content, if it's planned content, if people know what it is and it's coming and they even have a say in it, I think it'll do well. But we got to figure out the specifics of how to make this work. Thank you so much to Luna. Is it Luna the Moth? It scrolled off the screen. Uh, Luna the Moth King, who just became a sub over on Kick. And that means you're part of the Founders Club. You've earned yourself the Founders Club badge. Feel free to use it in the chat. Thank you so much for the support over there, Luna the Moth King. Speaking of which, speaking of which, currently on YouTube, 337 viewers and climbing, 61 likes. Please like the stream if you're on YouTube. Give it some engagement. Please consider a super chat. We got one so far from Chill Bill. It'd be great to get some more and maybe some memberships. We got none right now. Thank you to those who've tipped so far this morning. If you want to tip, you can either look at the description of the stream you're watching right now. Uh, you can use the tip command in chat on YouTube or you could. Uh, look at the About tab on Kick for information on that. Or if you're on Kick, you be become a sub, or you can give some subs to the community. Let's get some subs over on Kick today. We got the one. Let's get some more. Let's get the momentum going uh, in the right direction this morning, shall we? Thank you. Um, Flair LeClutch just did a two dollars super chat. Have you seen any good horror movies this month? Uh, so far, I have seen VHS two, VHS Viral, VHS. 94. I've seen a few VHS movies and I think they're pretty good. I'm actually starting to really enjoy this anthology style of horror movie because it's not one overbearing plot. It allows you to have like a 15 to 20 minute plot that's kind of digestible and fun. I think I'm actually liking that a lot. So I think I'm going to watch all of them. I think there's a few more I haven't seen yet. I think I'm going to continue to watch the VHS movies over the next week or two and, uh, and see that, right? Okay. Corey Field Mania likes my shirt. Well, like I said, now we're going into fall attire. Long sleeve shirts, sweatshirts, 
pullovers. That's what I wear during fall and winter. Now the weather is turned where I, it supports me wearing this. With this I can not sweating. So there you go. Uh, all right. So here's some people are talking about a paid Discord. All right. What you have to understand, guys, with a paid Discord. <laughs> This is a ginormous can of worms when you have the level of harassment that I have. There are people out there that absolutely would buy tons of fake Discord accounts and they would pay for this and they would flood this account, this paid Discord with troll content. They would try to get people's information to dox people. In order to make a paid Discord work, I would have to have a crack team of moderators who are sitting there 24-7 moderating to make sure that things don't get out of hand. Uh, in reality... This is not something that I have not thought about, nor that I haven't worked on. I actually have a couple of people who are interested in, in working on a Discord, and we just haven't gotten around to finalizing stuff yet. But to me, I am not confident that it's going to work. I feel like we would launch this thing, and immediately you would see such an influx of trolls, right? Trying to take this thing over, trying to turn it into a nightmare for anyone involved. Like I said, harassment doxing, all kinds of crap. And the other thing is, just to be very frank with all of you, I don't have time to sit around on a Discord messing around with it all the time. I just don't. Like, I, my, my own Discord, my moderator's Discord, where our mods just talk about the streams, I barely use. I'm in there maybe a couple times a week to chat with the mods about stuff. That's it. I just don't have time to mess around on Discord all day. So, it would be a bunch of people just sitting there talking without me even there. Probably infighting and arguing, you know, drama stuff. And it's like, I just feel like that's that's a whole can of worms that once you open it, you've unleashed it upon the internet. And now here's the thing. What's going to be the name on the Discord? Dark Side Phil. And that's the problem. Because the moment that I'm associated with it, if something goes wrong, now I'm the one who has to take all the flack for it, right? If I say, hey, we got a paid Discord, everyone. Everyone pays for it and goes on there. And within a week... Rules have taken over, it's doxing, and there's all kinds of fucked up stuff. Now, I'm the one who has to take the brunt of that suffering. Like, I did something wrong, right? When I didn't do anything wrong, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <laughs> Crazy Warlock says it's like putting on the baldo when you, you can't take it off once you've put it on. Oh, God. I would prefer for the baldo to not become a piece of content in my streams, but... <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Anyway, <clears throat> but that's that's definitely why... <clears throat> that's definitely why I have stayed away from doing anything with the Discord outside of just casual talking or doing interviews, right? That's it. So I don't know if that's going to be a good idea. Um, Jay says, how was your reacts and can you use Bison tonight? Well, the reacts went pretty good yesterday. Uh, I'm not using Bison tonight. I'm using Dalzim. I haven't used Dalzim in so long. And I want to get back to the swing of things with Street Fighter. I've also heard that Dalzim is one of the most improved characters since that Terry Bogard balance patch. So I want to figure that out for myself tonight. We're going to be playing with Dalzim tonight. <clears throat> Why not do a watch party? Can you do that on YouTube? No, you can't watch any copywritten content on YouTube at all. You get in trouble. You get your stream suspended. Well, not suspended, but shut down. Then you stop watching the content, then your stream comes. <clears throat> Excuse me. What's up, No Sleep Real Vibes? Uh, all right, so here's the deal. Topic number one, figuring out what to do for a reward for Friday. We haven't really figured it out yet. I hope that we do. I hope we can get to the bottom of it. Let's keep talking right now. That Thanksgiving turkey sub from, from Firehouse Subs sounds like a, a, an interesting idea. Maybe the Chicago tavern-style pizza from Pizza Hut also sounds like an interesting idea. That's too rejuggling right now. But if you guys have better ideas of other things, let me know. It, uh, I could maybe do some local food instead of then these chains. You know, I'm okay with that too. Um, as for the long form react, I, I'm thinking of doing one starting in December because my react show is going to end in the middle of November. I think it's like November 11th or 17th or something is the last show. Um, and then I want to give it a couple of weeks where we don't do that react content. But then I wanted to come back fresh in December and maybe do my first long form. But I want to figure out how do we nominate? Like, how do we figure out what you guys are interested in seeing, right? So that's what I mean. Do we do members? So we keep people becoming members on the DSP Reacts channel and then the members nominate and then I tally up the nominations and we do a poll like we just did with Halloween. How do I get kick viewers involved? Because I know kick viewers would be interested in getting involved. Like, how do we do this, right? We got to figure this out. So let's continue to talk, all right? 
And now, folks, time for our final topic of the day. <laughs> for clarification purposes, all right, the reason that I feel not, uh, I feel obligated to cover what's going on with Review Tech, and here's why, all right? If I don't talk about it now, with all the shit that happened yesterday, all that will happen is today I will try to play Alan Wake 2 and Street Fighter, and as I'm doing that, I will have people nonstop coming into the chat talking about this and asking for my opinion. And I'll be like, shit, no, I want to play games, right? You know what I'm saying? So I just want to get this out of the way. What has happened is Review Tech has sadly completely fallen apart at the seams, all right? He has taken every piece of bait from every person possible on the internet, and he has fallen victim to the same traps that the people that he has criticized or bullied over the years have fallen for. But he didn't learn from watching them fall for the traps. He's decided to also fall for every single trap possible, okay? <clears throat> Yesterday, Team Star on his Lalkal Live show, apparently had some woman that to some extent Rich has had involvement with over the years on the show saying things like, oh, we've been on and off dating for 10 years and here's some, some dirt on him and stuff like that. So what is it? Let's be honest here. This is like high school drama, he said, she said kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, it's giant revelations. Or it's just, it's just kind of like some of the silliest stuff you could imagine, right? And it would be like, if, if that happens, what do you do? Do you ignore it? Do you address it? Do you brush it off? Well, Rich, again, could have learned from the years where he bullied others. But now that he's the one getting bullied, he keeps falling for this. Over and over and over. He did a show yesterday where he kept calling like family members and women. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, why are you calling these people live on your show? Just think about it. Like, let's say, for example, someone from your past, maybe an ex-girlfriend of yours or an ex-boyfriend of yours was talking trash about you on the internet, right? Would you rush to the internet to start talking about it and, and calling them live? Or would you be like, all right, maybe we cover this behind the scenes. Maybe this is something that I just ignore. No, he takes the bait, hook, line, and sinker. It's just, I don't get it because you would think someone like him who's been doing it for a decade, doing this kind of, I'm covering drama. Now that he is the subject of the drama, it's like he never watched a piece of it and learned nothing whatsoever. We were, during my coverage of, of reacting to his documentary from June the King, he outright said, Early on in his YouTube days, you don't acknowledge your trolls. You don't address the nonsense. You move forward positively. Like he said all this stuff. Today, he literally does the opposite. All right? The reason people are bringing this up is because, well, Phil, did you hear that Review Tech had a meltdown? And now they're talking about you and stuff. And I'm like, no, I was streaming yesterday. I was doing my React content. I wasn't, you know, watching Lolcow Live. I wasn't doing all that. So we're going to go through a little bit of this now. Okay? And I'm going to give you my opinions on all this. So, by the way, Paul Rag, thank you for a membership. Paul became a member this week. All right, let's just watch some of this. I don't know how much we're going to watch. Let's go. No, I wasn't with the prostitute. That's the first word. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the first word. The first. Well, I wasn't with the prostitute. Oh, no. Oh. All right, for the record, okay, for the record, I have been through the ringer, right, with the shit that I've been through, but you guys know my drama. You know my drama is I was bad with money and made a lot of bad decisions with money. I spent money on a mobile game that I shouldn't have spent. I was irresponsible there. But I could tell you, thankfully, I was smart enough over the 16-year career that I have had 
They're never going to hear stuff about how Phil mistreated women and did these awful things to women. and He was involved with this. Or that. You're never going to hear that, thankfully. All right? I was smart enough. I wasn't smart enough with money. That's for sure. You can make fun of me about the money thing. You will be correct. But you can't make fun of me and be like, listen, now this, this woman is jumping out from 10 years ago. This happened and that happened. You're never going to hear that shit because it just hasn't. I, you know, you've known the women I've even been with over the course of uh, my time as a, a YouTuber, right? So, yeah. Um, let's, uh, I don't know how much I want to go into it. Let's just go. We never had sex. That was another part of the reason when she came from Korea, I got cold feet. She doesn't also let you know, yes, that was an absolute mistake. And it was, I, I got cold feet and I wasn't sure. I wasn't with my ex, but it was like, this is too fast. And I. So I just want you to think about this. Why is he talking about any of this right now on the internet? This is his private life. This is his private history. Okay. Even if Keemstar blew this up and made this big content for his show, why address it? Right. If it really is behind the scenes private shit, it has nothing to do with his stream content. It has nothing to do with anything. Why is he talking about it? He, he takes that bait so bad and just ha he can't resist. You know what I'm saying? He can't resist at all. He just, you know, it's insane. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. I don't get it. By the way, what's up, Game Boy? How you doing? I just don't understand taking bait so badly. I just don't. I also knew about that stuff at that time because she told me it in 2019. And that made me take pause. It's just Dude, what are you talking we about? We saw each other three times. We weren't together. I, uh, d did she say that we were fucking together? Did she say that? Ten years, thank you. We were together ten years in a fantasy fucking world. Been dating for like a decade, basically, right? God, we're starting off with a massive lie. Hello. Hi, Lauren. How are Hello. you? This you're you're on my live stream right what is now. This? I got a cool question for you. Uh, remember uh, Becky Boop? Yes. Yeah. Was I with her back in 2016 while I was still living under the same roof as you? No. Yeah. She's saying that we were dating since 2016. When did we, we met her in 2016. Yeah, yeah, apparently we were dating. Uh, also, too, I told you this back in the day. Uh, w isn't it true that she used to be a prostitute on Craigslist? Yeah, well, yes. Well, yeah, she, well, she used Why are you welling? Paid to get, she got, I guess she got paid to have sex with people, is what she had said. <laughs> Thank you. Go, uh, go back to sleep. I'll, I'll be getting the kids tomorrow. Have a good evening. I just I got to get this clear and straight. So a woman goes on Lolka Live and makes all these accusations about Rich. For Rich to attempt to prove his innocence, he pulls out his phone during his show. He calls the mother of his children, who he's not with, but he calls her to ask her about the past. This is all stuff that should be 100% private, never put public, never discussed. He has her on the show. Interrupting her, even said, go back to sleep. So he knows he woke her up in like the middle of her night to talk, talk about this. And then he says, oh, thanks. I'll, I'll pick up the kids tomorrow. I mean, this might actually be what not to do in a situation like 101, like the course on how to not react to something, right? So in order to prove my innocence, let me involve other people who should never be involved in my streaming content and pull them into this drama situation and call them in the middle of the night. <laughs> right? I just, this is wild. And the thing is, like, he thinks that this is good, that he's doing this, that he's defending himself. He's not. Even if he, he even if he disproves all the things that the woman said on Law Call Live, he's just making himself look worse. And you're right. The Red King says, this is none of our business. You're right. 
Red King, you absolutely are actually correct. This is none of our business. Do you want to know what the appearance of this Becky Boop was on LolCow Live? It's called bait. It's called you poke the bear and you see how the bear reacts. And if the bear reacts in a way that you can document and get something out of, you get more content. That's exactly, exactly what Keemstar wanted. That's the bait. That's how he does it. And Rich fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. So now he's got a stream going on where he's calling his, his ex, the mother of his children, in the middle of the night, makes him look terrible, right? He stood here, no, well, uh, no, you see, uh, it wasn't, I didn't have a prostitute from Korea. I got cold feet and this and that. Wait, what? What are you talking about? No, Rich, stop. Stop. <laughs> what is happening here? How, any, everyone right now who has, like, a, even, like, a piece of, like, uh, morality inside of them, they're seeing this happen live, and they're like, no, stop. <laughs> Rich, turn off the stream. You're freaking out right now. You've got to, like, Put the kibosh on this. This is the worst idea possible, what you're doing. And this was, I guess, supposedly, this was his whole stream yesterday. It was just him doing this, and everyone's like, you got to be kidding me. Like, there is absolutely no way this is going to possibly help him whatsoever. Why is he even streaming this, right? Like, what? <laughs> you know, okay, this is the day this all happened. Don't stream today. Wait a day or two. Come back in a couple days when this blew over, when people aren't talking about or caring about it anymore. Instead, he goes live immediately. Like, he thinks, I guess, he's going to benefit from it. No, he's not. You know? Oh, man. Never thought I'd have to do that one. But since we're going this below the belt, which I never imagined, even after all the shit that Jay would do, here we are. You're going to say I'm lying? Take me to court, Becky. Say I'm fucking lying. Did you really say we dated for 10 years? I've We've hung out, like, two or three times physically since, like, 2019. We weren't on and off for 10 years. You just said that on the show right now. Why would you lie? I just said we were on and off. We weren't even, we were not on and off. So, so this is her now. So you see, now he bring, oh my Lord. So now, so he first, he brought in the character witness, which was supposed to be his ex. But now he's calling the person who was just on the Keemstar show. And now, why would you do that? And by the way, doesn't this kind of already prove, he has her number and everything. So he's like, no, I had no relationship with her or whatever. Oh, by the way, I have her number. I can immediately call her live on my show. Like, huh? Isn't that contradictory? Like, <laughs> this, again, this isn't helping him at all, what he's doing. Since 2016, I was still in a uh, same roof relationship with Lauren. Can you, can you hear it? It's, it's a little, it's pretty, her end is low. Maybe I'll make this louder. I'm going to allow, make my TV louder too, because I can't really hear her. Since 2008. Like, yep. you're the one who says no. You've known me since 2008. From no, I knew you on POF from 2008. Don't twist it. I, we didn't talk. We never talked once until 2016, and we didn't go to a convention together. I met you there by chance. That was it. And we didn't. You do invited me. You literally invited me. I wasn't going to video game conventions. Or you, see, you see how silly this is? It's like, so now it becomes he said, she said, right? There's no way anyone's going to prove any of it unless you, like, I guarantee you this is going to result in, like, DMs are going to have to go on the internet and profile shit from 2008. This is so stupid, right? If he knew it was best for him, he would have been like, listen, she can sit there and say whatever she wants, right? My perspective is it's not true. She made it all up because Keemstar had her on the show. Maybe she's getting something out of it. Maybe she got paid. Maybe she got... Uh, promotion from it. Who knows what it is, right? But you say, I don't think this is, or I know this isn't true. I don't have any reason to sit here and, and blab about it all day. There you go. The problem is Rich doesn't have content. Get it? Like, he doesn't have anything else he can do. Like, what else would he be doing on stream? Watching me. In fact, holy shit, you guys notice something? His, his monitor's off. I'm, what happened to May 1st, 2016? He turned it off. Did he finally realize that having that on there has no power over me or anyone and everyone just laughs at him for never fucking leaving that date of time? I think it's what it is. Like, at this point, he got so fucking, like, slammed by Keen with this that now he's like, oh, fuck. Having that May 1st date up there 
when this is going on with me actually is not in my best interest, right? That, that's pretty crazy. Because that was on a screen for several streams, and now all of a sudden the screen's off, right? It's just, that's just crazy, like, but anyway, like, that's what I mean, like, what content does Rich have? He doesn't have any. So he actually thinks he's making content right now. It's like, no, he's not. Like, he's definitely not doing, just, here's what, in my opinion, what, how he should have handled it. Listen, this is obvious troll bait. I'm not taking it. It's not true. I'm going to take a step away. I can't do streams full time anymore. I need to find a job or whatever, take a mental health break. I'm going to go seek therapy, whatever it is. I'll be back in a month and I'll see you guys then when all this nonsense is blown over, right? And here's the truth. No one would be talking about Rich in a month because the reason everyone's talking about him now is because he takes the bait every day. If he would stop taking the bait, it would all fix itself. Do you get it? But he can't help himself. He takes the bait so hard every time. And that's why people keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is so ridiculous. Are you kidding? No, that's actually true. But you, that was, no, never mind. That was true. But you said we were dating since 2016. I said on and off. No, we didn't. I was still under the same roof with Lauren. We did not date. We, we went, the first time we ever hung out, the first time we ever hung out was 2019. I, we went out to dinner. We went out to dinner. Because I saw you on POF and then I moved on with my life. I sent you a message. You never responded. You moved on with your life so much you're on the phone with me right now. Right? Oh, don't yeah. twist that. Don't do the gaslighting twisting shit. You, you tried to make it out. Uh, you tried to make it like. No, what this sounds like to me, I, this is sad, but Rich is the kind of guy, he's very lonely, right? He's not in any kind of a relationship that's anything meaningful. He had one. It, it, it fell apart. So now he's got a you know, shared custody situation. And since then, the guy's lonely. I guarantee you, this is a situation where he's probably been flirting with this woman for over a decade. But that's probably all it ever was. Every once in a while, he said, oh, I'm going to be here. Come out, come and hang out and this and that. It doesn't sound like anything ever happened, right? It really doesn't sound like anything romantic ever really happened. It was just flirtation between the two. If this woman, all right, supposedly used to do things like have posts on Craigslist where people would pay her for interaction. That's all I'm going to say. Interaction. Then it stands to reason that she's going to keep trying to interact with him. Maybe she thinks she'll get something out of him at some point. You know what I mean? This whole thing is sad because it's just like, dude, this guy has been baited. Baited so hard for so long by so many. All <laughs> right. It's so insane. I, it, but, but I mean, again, the things that he's saying, oh, well, we never dated. We never had anything. But why do you have my number right now? And how are you able to call me then? Right? So it's, she's right. She just blasts right back in his face and makes him look stupid. If we have no relation at all or anything, why do you have my number and you're able to call me right now? Bam. Done. Right? So there you go. Like, this is the problem with this guy. He takes too much. I mean, look how long this clip is. I don't think we're going to be watching this whole thing. But he had her on the phone this whole time. He had her on the phone for like 10 minutes on his show. Our relationship was more substantial, so your, your credibility seemed better on the channel. Our relationship was not very substantial. It was full of love bombing and two-facedness from you. What, what does that even mean? What the fuck is love bombing? Oh my god. I don't even want to know, maybe. I don't even think I want to know. Love bombing? What the fuck does that mean? What? Does anyone even know what that means? What is love bombing? Sounds lewd. Yeah, I don't know what it means. I don't want to know what it means. Oh. Uh. Unfortunately, it wasn't substantial at all. No, the two-faced, this actually came from you. But we're going to keep watching, and I'm going to just keep uh, making sure that everyone knows that. We didn't date on it. You just said we were in a relationship on and off for 10 years. That's, like, factually. I why said, would you do that? Why would you do that? How many times are you going to make me answer the same question? I said we dated on and off. 
since 2014 or 2016. But that's not true. We didn't hang out till 2019. Literally, you've been trying to date me since 2008. I have all my text messages going back to 2008. I never delete anything. I have proof that you invited me. Yeah, you see how dumb this is? And I can't imagine how many people probably watch this shit. It's just like, so so exactly what Keemstar wanted happened. It, like, literally, what he wanted to happen happened. Like, puppet, puppet on a string, Rich fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Seriously. I stand with pills that love bombing involves giving someone excessive compliments, attention, or affection to eventually try to control them. Gotcha. So exactly what he wanted happened. He basically said, I'm going to have this woman on the show. I'm going to, I, I, you, we all know Keemstar. We don't, we don't know if he outright told her to lie or anything, but he probably told her embellish, be over the top, be, be dramatic, right? Give the people what they want. They want drama right now about rich. They want to hear dirt, right? So she probably over-exaggerated or embellished and said, we were on and off dating for 10 years. From Rich's perspective, he's like, no, we weren't. We flirted for a while online back and forth. We only met like a few times and it was only hanging out or whatever, right? But in her mind, she's going to over-embellish. That This is exactly what they wanted. So now they got him. So now he has to do a whole show of damage control where he's calling his ex, where he's calling the, the accuser. And it's just a, a nightmare scenario. It's literally a nightmare scenario for him. There's no situation here where he's going to prove his innocence. There's no situation here where any of this is ever going to help him. And in fact, I was told this, okay? Hold on. I was told to basically, like, listen to the end. The very end. Because that's where it kind of... What do you call it? Um... Well, let's see. Let's let's just see the end. Sure. <laughs> but regardless, but regardless, like I, I'm a then he has Keemstar on the show, which is exactly what Keem wanted. He gives him everything he wants. Hook, line, and fucking sinker. He's got him. News guy. I'm not gonna tell you my fucking source, even if it was Jay. I'm not gonna tell you. Well, I know like, it I'm was. Giving up my source. All right, I'm gonna get back to here. If you would like to come on again later, I. For the record, I'll just say this: I have had. Very few interactions with Jay, his editor, all right? The few interactions I've had were all through DMs on Twitter, of which Jay leaked all of them. Like, every interaction I had with Jay, he's leaked on the internet. Now, none of them were bad. Like, there's nothing there to leak, yet he did so anyway. One of them, apparently, he gave to one of my detractors' duty stream. So, if you were to ask me where would information come from that was leaking in this situation, I almost guarantee you it's Jay. Now, I have no evidence of that. But if you see a history, a pattern of behavior, well, if I've had basically two very casual, friendly conversations with Jay via DMs, once earlier in the year when I heard that he wanted to have me on his show, and then once when I invited him on my show a month or two ago, and if he leaked those, and there's nothing in them, no dirt, it stands to reason this guy is a serial leaker. Like, he just leaks everything. He can't, he has absolutely no credibility or trustability whatsoever. He's just going to leak any information at all, right? So I would believe that, like, probably it was Jay who leaked information about this woman and ended up getting her on Keemstar show to begin with. It sure seems like that to me. I may call you again, and we'll, 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 we'll have more of a discussion. At the point where you don't realize that you're losing the entire audience, like everyone, and you need to just abort the stream and then, like, come back in a week and we can pick up this fight. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. I'm curious to see what else she has to say. All right, well, have All right. fun. All right, it's a disaster. All right, love you. You're a good-looking guy, handsome guy. Love you. No matter what <laughs> direction I go in with this, if I don't talk about it, I was fucked. If I do talk about it, I was fucked. So I might as well just be fucked and give my take because I don't have anything to hide. All right. So now I get to really give Rich a piece of advice. Okay. Rich, when someone gives you a situation like this, hands you an L, you have two options. You can either be like, I'm going to completely take the bait and give them what they want, or you're going to refuse to give them what they want. If you refuse to give them what they want, for a short period of time, you'll look like a villain because people will be like, oh, you see, he didn't respond to it, so it must be true. But what happens then is that it blows over. What happens then is no one cares because they know it's a dead subject. You're not going to address it. 
Other people may try to beat the dead horse, but it ain't going to go anywhere. Without your interaction, without you giving more to it, it dies on the vine, as they say. What you did is you literally 100% gave them everything they need to have this continue to grow and prosper. You gave them fertilizer and watered it on top of it, you see? You were fucked either way, that's correct, but you can either take the L and move on and ignore it, or you can actually make it worse. Listen, I'm someone who, for the greater part of a decade, everyone made fun of me for various things. He sucks at games. He sucks at commentary. He doesn't know how to stream. He doesn't know how to, how to you know, have a relationship. He doesn't know how to handle money. He doesn't know how to handle this and that. And then it becomes, oh, he's a scumbag. He's a scammer. He's this, he's that. And every step of the way, I basically say, listen, I'm not going to sit here and address every single thing my trolls say because it's a waste of everyone's time. I would much rather make meaningful content, positive content for my audience, right, that they like. And that way, here's the deal. If you don't care about that shit, you're still going to come back and hang out with me for the meaningful content that I continue to make, right? That's what I've done. That's why despite the fact that for over a decade, people shat on me constantly, I'm still here and I still have a following. I didn't lose my following or my support base. I, I still have it. You know what I'm saying? But that's because I made meaningful content outside of the drama. Rich, the problem with you is that you literally never, ever made meaningful content. You only made drama content. That's what got you views. Oh, the Xbox 720 is going to fail. Oh, I got an inside scoop from Sony and you made it all up that this is going to happen. Oh, this person had the worst day of their life drama today. Let's watch and make fun of them. Oh, oh, that was your content. You never found a foothold in meaningful content. So because you didn't, now that all this is flipped on its head, you don't have anything else to rely on. You could have easily said, well, everyone's talking junk about me today, but instead we're going to review this tech, right? Today we're going to play this game. They were going to have this fun hangout session with my viewers, right? Literally, I have drama on my show today. How long has this segment been? 15, 20 minutes? I had a whole over an hour of other stuff that's fun, interactive stuff that we were hanging out, having a good time before I got to this segment. You don't have a segment. You just have the drama. That's it. That's your life. But that's the bed you made for yourself. You have to change. If you're going to continue to make content on the internet, you have to change now because you're going to be the butt of the joke from now on because you've done this, you've taken the bait, you 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 fell for the trap, right? That's the best advice I can give him. Take a break, come back in like a month, all right? Regroup and refocus. And then if you're gone for a month, no one's gonna give a shit about any of this that just happened. No one will give a shit about it. No one's gonna keep talking about this endlessly for a month, right? They're just gonna be like, all right, it, it panned out, move on to the next thing. In the next month, there's going to be other shit. There's going to be Dr. Disrespect shit's going to happen and fucking Asmund Gold shit's going to happen and this is going to happen. No one's going to care about Rich. So then you can come back and you can have a nice stream where you say, listen, guys, I've changed for the better. I'm not going to be high today. Instead, we're going to have meaningful discussions about hot topics, news. We're going to talk about tech today. We're going to have good content. And if you make good, positive content that's not drama about others, you might actually find a foothold again somewhere and you might retain some kind of viewership. But what you're doing right now, seriously, what you're doing right now is the worst possible thing you can do. And this is coming from someone who has gotten the worst of this kind of abuse for the last decade, all right? I'm giving you unique perspective here because most other people who are going to try to give you advice aren't going to give you sound advice, Rich. I'm trying to help you now. Walk away, come back, rejuvenated, refreshed, off drugs, and start making meaningful content again, and you can actually recover from this. But you have to do that. You can't, oh, I'm going to be back tomorrow with more drama. We're going to address it again. We're going to call more people. I'm going to air all my dirty laundry. This is the absolute worst level of content you could be doing. And I hope that you grow from it. I hope that you learn from this now. I'm trying to give him honest advice. But in truth, he doesn't like want advice from what I, from what I know. I've tried to help this guy multiple times. Just trying to be nice to the guy. He like spits in your face. So... Obi understands that. Like, I don't, I don't wish ill of this man whatsoever. I want him to recover. I want him to get better. I wish, as I've said many times, right? If these people were having a good, prosperous life and they were happy, 
they wouldn't have to crap on others constantly. If Rich had a way to make positive, meaningful content, then he wouldn't have actually crapped on me for 10 years. He wouldn't have had to do that. But he doesn't. He needs to regroup and find a way to make stuff that people will care about again. And it's not this. This is the worst. This is, the bo this is rock bottom spiraling down to the bottom of the barrel and getting flushed. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wish him, I really legit mean this. I wish him the best. I, I don't want to talk about Rich every day. I don't want, I feel like it's a waste of time, but the fact that this is where he's, he's ended now is just like, I need, he needs help and he needs to walk away for a while, not just for like a day, not for a week, a while that when he comes back, he can feel like it's a reset button being pushed, right? All right. That's all I got to say about that. Let's do some shout outs. What's hilarious is we got people saying, Demanding Alan Wake. It's not the podcast isn't even over yet. It isn't even the time when we will be playing the game. Can you like relax? <laughs> Why isn't he playing Alan Wake? Because it's 1253. We wouldn't be playing Alan Wake yet. Like, what are you talking about? Anyway, we got shout outs to do. Three gifted subs over on kick from Sneed Dave William. Thank you very much, Sneed Dave William. I appreciate that. That will get us past the $50 mark, so we're more than a third into our goal for today. Thank you so much for that. And we got a couple tips that came in. So one tip the dollar fourteen is it's not uncommon for people to keep their contact info after having a relationship with each other. I understand that. That doesn't mean that he should feel like he could just call her like that on the show. We don't. We never had a relationship. By the way, I can call her at any moment, and she'll answer, and I'll have her on my show. Like, what? No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it just doesn't, right? Okay. Okay, now I got a troll, so I ignore the troll. Cool. All right, guys. And by the way, Iron Chef Sakai had re-upped his membership. Actually, hold on. Sarah had done a two euro, excuse me, a two pound super chat. That this is sad. I feel sorry for him and his family. Yeah, I mean, again, this is what I said. This guy's a family. This is not. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a solo streamer. This guy has family members and everything that are affected by all of this crap. You know what I mean? So the moment that he acts like that on his stream irresponsibly, that doesn't just affect him. That affects everyone around him, and he doesn't see that. He doesn't have. He says that I'm not self aware. He is the most unself-aware person I've ever seen in my life. He doesn't understand that everything he has done has hurt people around him, and he continues the bad behaviors that hurt the people, right? But then he, then, oh, I'm going to make fun of Phil today. Hey, look, May 1st on the TV. Are you insane? <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. Iron Chef Sakai became an Ultra member again this morning. Thank you for re-upping your Ultra membership, uh, Iron Chef Sakai. I really appreciate that. And, hold on. Uh, Spawn Killer did a $2 super chat. How are you going to say Jay did it without evidence? I didn't say that. I said, my experience with this guy, Jay, his editor, is this simple. I've talked with him two conversations via Twitter. The first time I'm talking with him, he's being completely nice to me. And then he talks shit about me on his Twitter account. I'm like, dude, like, I'm not going to see that. Like, what are you doing? And then he leaks all the DMs. Like, there was nothing in the DMs bad at all. Like, what, what was the point? And then months later, right? I said, I, I offer him an opportunity to be on my show. He's like, I don't think that it would make sense to be on your show. I don't think your viewers would want to see it. I said, no, I think they would. I think us to just be as gamers, as content creators, just to have a casual conversation or whatever would be fascinating. And the fact that you thought originally it was just going to be about Rich is ridiculous. I'm talking to you months later now. It has nothing to do with Rich. Rich is done, right? I'd still like to have you as a guest. So he doesn't respond. And then he leaks all the DMs to duty streams. For what? There's nothing bad there. It's, so the two interactions I've had with this man are weird conversations where the guy acts like an oddball, kind of unhinged. I think I need to leak everything Phil ever said to the internet, even though there's nothing of drama there. There's no point to doing it. It stands to reason he'd literally leak everything ever said to him to anyone he wants. Because for some reason, he thinks this is like content or whatever, right? I don't know. It just sounds to me very bizarre. This behavior is bizarre. So... If anyone is leaking stuff, it's probably him, right? 
I don't have evidence of that, but it's probably the guy who's leaked every every innocuous, casual, normal conversation I had with the guy has been leaked. Then he probably leaked the drama shit too, right? So poor, poor Rich for years trusted, definitely trusted the wrong guy who likely will now leak everything he ever said to that man. And that'll be the content that guy will always put out forever is leaking Rich's shit, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, did I add that? Did I add the two bucks? Shit. I don't know if I added Spawn Killer's $2 Super Chat or not. You guys let me know if I did, because I don't know if I did. Okay. All right. So that's what I have for today. Now, what I would say as a takeaway from this is as follows. Number one, please, let's continue to brainstorm what I should do on Friday as a reward for hitting the goals. Let's crush that goal today and hit it. And let's figure out what we're going to do. All right. It, right now we have a sandwich from Firehouse Subs that looks interesting. We've got a pizza from Pizza Hut that looks interesting. But there might be something else out there you guys could come up with that sounds more interesting. I want something that's interesting to you. I came up with the Crave Cookies idea. You guys didn't like it. So we're going to roll with something different. But I need to know what. That's number one. Number two, let's figure out how to do the long form react that I want to start doing possibly in December. We've already got the first idea. Um, let's keep that rolling. Let's uh Blackjack, I don't know why Nightbot would have flagged you. I don't... Oh, my God. He's freaking out. Blackjack Yak's been freaking out all morning, and I don't know why. I think he needs to relax. Hold on. Oh, because you said pay pigs. That's why. And pay pigs is a, is a word that's blocked. That's why. Okay. Anyway... Let's figure out the next long form react as well. So those are two things we got to think about this week. All right, let's think about it this week. Try to figure it out and we'll reapply. Maybe tomorrow we'll talk about it again. Maybe some people will have some interesting ideas in the next 24 hours. Maybe some people will leave comments on this video on the fact after, after the demand, uh, on, on demand, excuse me, and, uh, and go from there. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. That's what I got for the show for today. Tomorrow. I'm sure we'll be talking about the Alan Wake DLC. We'll talk about how my night in Street Fighter went. We'll talk about if the streak continued, which I hope it does. We'll be talking about all kinds of stuff, hopefully more ideas and the like. Thank you for watching the Level 1 Podcast, and I will see you on Wednesday.